The main thing we want to illustrate in this video is the difference between a multimeter and an oscilloscope. Now the biggest difference between a multimeter and an oscilloscope is the sample rate. So although a multimeter has a very good sample rate of four times per second, it pales in comparison to an oscilloscope which takes a million samples per second, meaning that it is able to capture finer details, glitches, all of those small details that we might want to see. Um, so although 90% you know, of the time you're okay with a multimeter, sometimes it is nice and it is helpful to use an oscilloscope. So first, let's do a little demonstration. We're going to check starter amperage draw. So initially, when a motor is first energized, it's not moving, and therefore it doesn't have any counter electromotive force, as we like to call it. So there's a huge amperage spike. Now the meter, we're gonna see how much amperage the meter captures during this amperage spike. Okay, and we're gonna use our amp clamp, of course, also known as an inductive pickup. All right, so we're pretty much ready. Now, it's very difficult to just look at this meter while it's cranking and try to visually see what the maximum amperage draw is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our min-max function. So we could use min-max, or we could also do peak min-max. So instead of four times per second, we could actually see a sample rate of 40 times per second. So let's try that out. Okay, so let's crank the vehicle. Okay, so now I'm going to press this min-max button again. Okay, we're gonna see our minimum is obviously zero. Okay. And our max, it only is showing up in, in this particular test. It captured a peak amperage of 282 amps. Now we're going to repeat the same test, but this time we're going to use the Pico Scope. Uh, Pico Scope is one of the more common scopes that you'll find out there, and a lot of manufacturers are starting to use them as well. Um, and we're hooking it up almost identically to the meter, except instead of jacks, we have a BNC connector here. So I've already set my scope parameters. We've got our zero range here. Okay. Our amp clamp is, is pretty much the same as a meter amp clamp. Okay. So we turned that on, we zeroed it out, and of course this is directional as well. So all we need to do now is to hook this up around the positive battery cable going to the starter, just like we did with the meter. Okay. And now we're gonna crank it and we're gonna see how many amps we get. You'll probably notice that another really big difference between the multimeter and using an oscilloscope is the way that we view our values. So on the multimeter, we're just seeing numbers, whereas on the scope, we're actually seeing a trace, which is this blue line. So it's kind of like a graph. So instead of looking at numbers and interpreting it, we get actually a little bit more of a visual sense or a visual idea of what's happening. So but we do have to look at our lines and see what our actual number values are. So here, this line, this is zero amps right down here. And then every square, it goes up a little bit more. So we go from zero to 72 to 142 to 212 to 82. Now right here, you can see that this trace is still climbing. So we have at 282, we have already passed what the multimeter was able to see as far as this amperage spike is so we keep going up, 352, 422, all the way up to 600 amps. Now, in all reality, our starter motor is probably actually drawing well above 600 amps initially. 
okay, just initially. And of course, you can see it levels off down here um, around 140, which is, which is about average. And that's the actual specification that we use to check starter draw. We don't go by this peak amperage. Um, but our amp clamp, our, or our probe, only goes up to 600 amps. So we are not going to be able to see above what the equipment can see. Now this is a one million per second sample rate. Now we can actually set up this scope so that we can see above one million samples per second. This is definitely, obviously, a much more accurate tool if you are trying to test something very specific and if you want a higher resolution and if you like to see a, a pattern or a trace of what your signal or maybe a sensor actually looks like. Here what we're measuring now is frequency of the mass airflow sensor. It's pretty easy to understand how they work. Basically the more frequent these peaks and valleys on the trace are, the more air is flowing through the sensor. So when we accelerate the engine, it's going to draw more air in and we're going to have more peaks and valleys at a faster rate. Okay. So let's accelerate the engine and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. You can see there that we raised our engine idle and we have more frequency or more peaks and valleys as we accelerate the engine because there's more air. Okay? Something that you can see here that's different than the meter is you can actually see the peaks and valleys. You can see if they're even. You can see the slope okay, on either side. Whereas with the meter, you're really just getting a number. Okay. Now some of the other nice features of the oscilloscope is that it can also take a measurement as well. So let's take a closer look at that. Now that we have a good trace up, okay, we can see the frequency, we might want to get a specific numerical value just like we would with our meter, uh, except we can use the oscilloscope to get that actual value. Um, so it's always a good idea to use your cursors here. So here's the upper cursor, and down here is the lower cursor. Okay, so this is cursor number one, and we put this at a, a high set point. So this is at the very top of our sensor signal. We can see that it's upwards of almost 5 volts, 4.99 volts. Okay, now cursor number two, it's down near zero. We're only at 110 millivolts, so that's not very much. It's very close to zero. Now the difference between the cursor number one, or the high, and cursor number two, the low, is 4.88 volts. So it already does the math for us as well, so that's pretty convenient. Um, this also shows frequency. So this is shown at the very bottom of the picoscope screen. It's kind of hard to see, it's, in, it's very small, but it is very nice because you can see just about everything that you want to see numerical value-wise. So it's showing here that we're looking at the frequency, we're looking at the entire trace, so it's taking a pretty decent sample size of what the screen is, and it's showing our current value. So the current value is hovering around 2.8 kilohertz, so 2,800 hertz. And you can see that occasionally it does jump up. But it's also showing you a minimum of 2,800 hertz, or 2,799 hertz. Um, and our maximum value, and it changes once in a while, but our max value goes all the way up to, I think I saw 45, yeah, 4,707 hertz. Here what we're measuring is the frequency and amplitude of our crankshaft position sensor. So we hook this up just like we would a meter.
Let's say we are trying to find a glitch um, or a momentary contact disconnect for our crankshaft position sensor. Uh, you know, maybe it has a momentary open sometimes. Those coils, they do tend to um, come apart or maybe our magnet is a little bit weak and our signal strength isn't what it should be. So what we can do is, down here, we have a nice little red button that we can hit and it will do a freeze frame for us. So we have these 31 frames and so we can keep toggling back 31 different frames or sometimes you might want to say pages so that we can see if there's anything abnormal. If we were to actually diagnose this crankshaft position sensor, what we would be looking for is to make sure that we have good repetition so we can see, okay, here's cylinder number one, and after so many teeth or so many counts and transitions, we have cylinder number one again, and again, and again. Now, this doesn't really give you enough detail, so if we wanted to sort of zoom in on just one section, so we can see the reluctor wheel missing tooth, then we could do that. We just come up here to our window zoom, click, drag, release, and voila. Now we can have a much better or a much more detailed look at our missing tooth here and all of the teeth in between until this reluctor wheel spins around a full 360 degrees. That way we're sure that we have looked at the entire reluctor wheel integrity um, and also hopefully if there is a problem we were able to catch something on the crankshaft position sensor itself as well.